and we should be live, hopefully. If not, then we'll figure out why we're not live, and then we can do some uh, on-the-fly uh, quick fixes. So, hey guys, uh, we're doing something different today. We're not streaming Content Exiles, we are streaming The Longest Journey, and we are on Twitch. I can see it on my computer right there. <laughs> Huzzah. Huzzah! Wait a second, uh, I, I came to play Content Exiles. Like I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Jens Erik, I'm the Community Manager at Funcom, uh, and I'm joined by two very special guests. Uh, let me show you the yourselves. I am Ragnar from Quist from Red Thread Games, and I am the uh, game director of this game. Which is called Painful Chapters, that you can see back there. And I'm uh, Martin Bruscard, I'm the design director at Red Thread Games. I made this game. Yes. They kind so of look the same, <laughs> except yours is green. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we're uh, uh, gonna be streaming The Longest Journey and we're gonna be talking to you guys a bit about uh, Dreamfall Chapters because you put out Dreamfall Chapters today on consoles, which is very, very yes. good, very Thank well you. done. Thank you. Well. And uh, why are we streaming The Longest Journey? Well, because The Longest Journey uh, was the start of everything and Dreamfall Chapters is sort of the end. The end. Of yeah, this. although I guess we shouldn't say the end because then people will be yeah, that's, that's correct. Longest Journey got... The, the, the start was like 1999, which is, uh, by my calculations, <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, 18 years ago. It is 18 years ago, yeah. yes. So, uh, so it's, been a, it's been a, wait for it, long journey. Oh. <laughs> so I get old. Yeah, no. <laughs> I, I have to admit, I haven't played The Longest Journey uh, for a very, very long time. Yeah, neither so. have I. So I think this is going to be a very exciting uh, thing because we're going to be uh, uh, first we're going to be doing this and then we're going to be doing this and I hope that everything works out well because uh, I'll just have my uh... yes um, because uh, we figured why not revisit a almost 20 year old game <laughs> on a dev stream and talk about uh, uh, the the guy who wrote and designed it. And it's looking it's quite well. Uh, the black bars are because of the uh, screen resolution. Uh, it's uh, unfortunately going to stay that way, and hopefully you'll be able to uh, bear with us. And uh, please let me know if the uh, sound on the stream is too loud or too low or anything like that, and we will try to uh, try to fix it. So, uh, yeah. I think it's a good idea to stream. I think a lot of people are streaming Dreamfall chapters today. So you can probably, if, if you want to watch that, you can do that afterwards. We're probably the only one streaming The Longest long Journey. So why not? I did a quick Google search and I, I couldn't find any live streams of The Longest Journey, but I could find some like VOD stuff. So there are people streaming The Longest yeah, Journey. Yeah, I know. Still. I could also find a, uh, I also found a, uh, a Reddit thread where someone said, hey, what do I do if my game doesn't pick up, uh, no, if OBS doesn't pick up my game, I'm trying to stream The Longest Journey. <laughs> uh, so uh, we are... Um, uh, I'm being told that there's no picture, just sound, but uh, I can see right here that there is picture and sound, uh, Ali. Says, uh, says my boss on the other side of the camera over there. Uh, do people see us? Hopefully people can see us. I get a black screen and Just refresh it. <laughs> Picture look fine, says yeah. Wild Peaks. Yeah, they can see us. Good. All right. And yes. yeah, like I said, if it's too loud, uh, then please uh, let me know and I can fix it, hopefully. And uh, uh, yeah, I guess. Uh, but yeah, you, uh, Martin, you don't, uh, you never worked on uh, Longest Journey as far as I know. I never worked on it, no. But I'm sure you grew up with it. Do you have any kind of history with the game? Not really. I, I actually played the game for the first time before we started making Greenfall Chapters because yeah. I figured I, I need to know the... Was it really before or was it just like exactly <laughs> when you started working and you go like, oh shit, I'm going to be designing this, I need to know what I'm doing. It was the latter. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, uh, that was fun. I'm, uh, I was super happy that uh, I found walkthroughs uh, that were made. Yes. Many years ago, it looked like it, but it is a very difficult game. It is, and it's uh, a very long game. I was still game. struggling with, even though I had the walkthroughs. So. Speaking of walkthroughs, we're going to have a walkthrough on the left here, <laughs> just in case, because uh, the last time I played this was in 2008, so it was nine years ago, 
Uh, it was about the same for you. You said it was 10 years ago. I, I think, no, so. I did play the opening. So we had something called JourneyCon a few years back where we brought uh, Longest Journey fans to Oslo. Uh, I think like at least a few hundred people showed up, something like that. And we did a, a session where I was going to play the opening of the game in front of everyone. It was really embarrassing. It was really embarrassing. Like, uh, you know, you imagine the, the most embarrassing thing you can possibly imagine. Hello, <laughs> testing more embarrassing one. No, but it's it's just it also shows how how difficult the game is, and and trying to sort of figure things out with like a mindset of a modern gamer. It's just like, no, my brain is not capable anymore. Yeah, because there, there we had a room full of hopeful people that were in the room with the person who made the game, uh, looking forward, so looking to all these tidbits of information yeah. and all these all these secrets. That like you like no watching a star do. athlete in, his, in, a, in, in, in a game, you yeah. know, like uh, watching Michael Jordan, you know, dunk. Yeah. Yeah. Really, no, no, he just fell flat on his face. And he did. We actually yeah. have someone in chat, uh, Neurotic Ninet, saying, Rubber Ducky Subway Puzzle, what the crap. I hear you. Good times, <laughs> good times. You have to remember, this was a, this was a, this was a simpler time. This was... Uh, <laughs> that doesn't make sense. <laughs> but it's not a simple puzzle though. No, no, it's a simpler time in like, that games were like, people played a game every five years. And that game was supposed to last you and you passed it on to your children and grandchildren. And like, it was supposed to be like a tough game, a stringy game, like, like a farmer. Like a, <laughs> like a farmer in the old west. <laughs> You know, like right. it's yep. hung on to life for, you know. I understand. That makes sense. That's basically the longest journey. Yeah. So you had to make it last. You had to make it last, yeah. like like a, like a, like a good book, you know. So so it's Just supposed to be a game with like calluses in your brain. Exactly, <laughs> calluses in your brain. Yeah. yeah, that sounds very unhealthy. But but yeah, it, that's true though. Like games were challenging back then. They weren't supposed to be easy entertainment. It was supposed to be you know raw hard work. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so that was the background. That's what games were like back in the nineties. All of them. <laughs> Um, so so the, we did go into this with like, let's make the puzzles as hard as possible. Uh, it wasn't really sort of, let's try to make them easy or approachable. No, approachable, screw that. It was supposed to be really hard. And I think like, I, I, I'm not even sure that we could have solved those puzzles. That, that was sort of our attitude too. Like, mm. what can we do that's just more difficult than what we could possibly yeah. be able to get through? And it was something that a lot of adventure ga games had at yeah, the time, that, especially it was like pride. Yeah, um, it was for example like the um, there's a puzzle in one of the Gabriel Knight games where you have to disguise yourself. Oh God! Yeah, as the, someone um, else, yeah. and you have to like take you that put is an infamous glue puzzle. on a piece of fence, and it rips off some cat hair. Yeah, you put the cat hair you're on your face. Yeah, you're impersonating someone. You put on a fake mustache, and yeah. that person you're I, impersonating it doesn't, doesn't even have, have a mustache. mustache. Yeah. It's like. <laughs> I remember playing Gabriel, I, and I was a huge Gabriel Knight fan. Like the first one was a big inspiration for the longest journey, and the second one was this weird, full motion video thing, like it looked like like a porn movie. Yeah. Uh, but the third one, like I started playing, and I got to that point, and I was like, no, no, I'm I'm done. <laughs> this is, games are no longer about this for me. I want easy games that sort of you know swayed me in this sort of soft comfort <laughs> that carries me through. Like that's that's my games yeah. now. I'm old. And that, children, is the day that the adventure game died. <laughs> <laughs> and all hope in the world. <laughs> yeah, because this came out sort of like in the tail end of, of that, that genre. Yeah, I think so. Although, no, that's wrong. You can't say that. Tail end of the genre. Adventures but like are it's, alive it's, it's, it's and come well. It's come back in like recent it's years. It's always but been there. Yeah. It's always been okay. there. My mistake. You My just mistake. looked a different way. You just... I yeah, did do that. Yeah, exactly. I did do that. You, you didn't know your true love was... You know, right next to the whole time. <laughs> no, but adventures never really went away, but they've sort of gone through different phases. Where yeah. obviously the uh, the classic point-to-click adventure game had sort of a, a lull, but they came back uh, with uh, digital distribution and I think also uh, iPad and, sure. and iPhone yeah. and things, you know, that are very well ta tailored to those kinds of games. Yeah. But the, the adventure has, has never gone away. Rosella500 says in chat that adventure games are the one genre that's had a resurgence every year since 1990. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, I think we should just uh, jump in and really? uh, we won't We're have... We're having so much fun. Yeah, this like we won't be, have any sound, it's be hard. unfortunately, because uh, like the music... Can you do the um, music? And, uh, <laughs> 
music and stuff like that is. But this scene really is beautiful. so important, though. So if anybody Come plays Dreamfall chapters story, and yeah. hasn't played The Longest Journey, if you please, make it all. We would love to hear you should, yeah. you should, you should at least so locate a, um, um, a let's play or something and and watch the beginning and end of the game and, yes. and this scene because we recreated. This scene for Dreamfall chapters. That's not a spoiler. It's yeah. it's, uh, it's in the game pretty pretty early on. Yeah. When I when I saw this in Dreamfall chapters, when I first played it, I was like, Oh, it, this is that thing. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. And then I just like slapped my hands together. Okay. Let's go. We're. Uh, I, I I know where you're taking me, and I want to go there. And I'm not going to spoil anything, but like it's it's I I I think this is a part of the game that really pays off for those who did play the longest journey, who have been fans for a long time, and I think we've gotten a lot of responses. From from those, those players, and I'm not saying you're not going to lose out on a lot not having played the longest journey. You, you, not necessarily. But there's, there's background here, and there's, there's a universe here that, that really comes to light in this location. So. Absolutely. So I love this, and I love the. Uh, you can't hear it, but the uh, the uh, the old uh, the old woman. Actor, unfortunately, I can't remember the actress name. She was amazing. Uh, the, yeah, the voice acting in this is very very good. It is very good, and the amazing thing with the longest journey is that we. Uh, I, I went to New York for I think two weeks like to record all the dialogue for this game, and and um, Sarah Hamilton who played April. She was in the studio in all the time, and she played. Uh, she acted uh, opposite the other actors all the time. We had several actors in the studio at one time, and that's right. not not a very typical thing to do. Usually, you record everybody separately, yeah. which is what we've done with Dreamfall chapters. Because it's hard to, you know, get actors to get it in the studio. But that's how we did it, and it feels like an ensemble. You know, all the actors uh, uh, are, you know, stage actors in New York. All the actors were really, really good. They hadn't done any games before, and it felt like just this sort of intense period where all these people came and did something fun, and everybody loved it. And it was, uh, I think you can tell the the VO is generally very, very good. Yeah, I also think it helps to to have them all in the same space together because then they can play off each other. Yeah, it helps they can, so much. They can like move and react to each other as they're like performing their characters. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I didn't have a lot of VO directing experience back then. To, it was a learning experience and they were super helpful with that too. Like, they, it, it just felt like like just a yeah group of guys came together, did something for fun for two weeks and then... Yeah. Is, is that a thing that's sort of gone away now or does that still happen? Uh, we didn't do that a lot for uh, doing multiple actors chapters. together. Yeah. Um, it's not normal, but the, when you can do it, I know like Tacoma from the Gone Home guys that did that. They brought yes. like a whole ensemble into the studio. It's so much better when you can do that. On the Secret mm. World, we did that. Yeah. When the uh, the Egyptian uh, gods, we all brought all of them into the studio at the <laughs> same time, and that helped so much. But mm. we we only did it a few times with Dreamful Chapters. We did it with um, Zoe and Reza, her boyfriend. And they're having some of the uh, their dialogue was recorded at the same time. In like the the kitchen scenes, for example. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Those are some. It's some it's it's. But the studios are usually not set up to do it either, because they they usually use like having one person in the booth right. and that's yeah. it. So. And I think for a lot of a lot of voice actors set up their oh, they set up home studios, and then they stream like themselves into like recording yeah. studios so they can do do stuff from home. For, like uh, when Joel has been uh, doing VO work for. Uh, Conan Exiles, mm. like he is on Skype or something with the voice actor, and they record stuff in their own studio. Oh, really? And he yeah. can like hear what they're doing and then like give them. Give yeah, them we direction. do Skype, but we call into like a studio in usually in London, sometimes in uh, LA or San Francisco. But so we do the Skype on our end, but but the, the actors are always in the studio. Right. We missed uh, one of the, the few male, man. yeah, <laughs> one of the full first full frontal male nudity scenes in games ever. Very progressive for 1999. Very progressive. <laughs> we just didn't know that it was such a big deal, I guess. Yeah. It's just a penis. And then, and then is 18... that okay? Can I say that? On yes, a, you can say that. Like, I think that culture still exists here in the. Considering, oh, considering we released the, the penis culture. Yeah, considering yeah, we released like the dick game of 2017. That is true. Oh, that's true. I I almost totally forgot. Of course, you can say penis on this show. You guys are the penis people indeed we are and uh, there are some hilarious gifs out there of uh, naked people dancing and the, the weird way that uh, character models can contort if you know how to uh, to uh, that's, that's properly amazing. Uh, yeah, properly do some stuff it's, uh, penile physics we really need to get on that I think you, know? you really well, should yeah. because uh, I think it uh, I think it helped us nice. you have no shame we are Indeed. absolutely fine screaming from a bad dream at 4 right. so now we did the penis thing we were gonna 
you know, there was there was a given. I mean, you, you start there. you started out with with uh, full frontal nudity in 1999, and then like you jumped directly to a girl in her underwear. Yeah, so and it's some like kind of, you're you're starting on a theme and here. And so kind of thick black socks. <laughs> so I was wondering about what is she actually wearing there. It looks like she's wearing boots or but, something. But it looks super weird. But a lot of people do wear thick black socks when they go to bed, and I think that was the intent. She just likes being comfortable. Yeah. Maybe Newport is colder than we think. Yeah, it is. Her and room is very icy. Oh, it is actually the middle of the summer uh, when he played this game, and she keeps talking about how that hot I'll the city is. So I don't think that is it. Something. But I think, I, I think she even talks about how the air conditioning in her room is broken. So I think. Uh, she just likes being. Maybe maybe they're cooling socks. It's the future. Makes yeah, sense. There we go. The this is now canon, people. <laughs> cooling it socks. It is now cooling socks. Uh, wait. You heard it here first. This is the kind of stuff you learn on, on exactly. when you join the streams. Exactly. Uh, I actually wrote this. That's just, that's it's it's in there. It's, it's in, in there. It's in the script. She's it's wearing cooling script. socks. I, I, yeah. I was going to uh, bring the script for the game, but I was a bit frazzled when we left. But I was going to bring like I have this folder that has like the whole like the game design and like the story design for the game. It's like this thick, mm -hmm. and uh, I forgot. But that would have been fun. That sounds that that was an amazing story. <laughs> <laughs> Great ending to it as well. We uh, we have someone in the chat saying that they have a tattoo of the talisman of the uh, balance that on his arm. Very cool. After this thank game. you. Show uh, us. Quantum Collider says my favorite character was Brian Westhouse before he turned into a Sith Lord. <laughs> now I haven't. <laughs> He's I haven't, fin I haven't finished Sith Dreamfall Lord. chapters. I haven't played the entire of Dreamfall. He's I haven't finished Dreamfall Sith chapters. He's a good guy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. For those who haven't played the game, he is a good guy. <laughs> no. If you have to play the game, then <laughs> Someone also said that uh, if this was realistic, she would be naked. I mean, this is a dream after all. But, uh, I, but sometimes you like you wake up in dreams. You wake up in dreams. You don't do that. But is you, this a dream? That's the thing. That's the thing. Is it a dream? And it really isn't, is it? We must speak and I don't, don't think that's a big spoiler. I mean, it's it's pretty established that it's this is branch. really not a dream. I she thinks have it's the a dream. Off. <laughs> and she meets and the actor who plays again. You can't hear the voices, so you know, great There's anecdotes. But they they can, but we can't. The we oh, they can hear the sound of the game. Yeah. <laughs> but like the actor <laughs> playing the over it. actor playing the the, the tree here, he was. Um, his nickname in the audio recording business, because that's how it goes. His name, his nickname was James Earl Scale, oh, because wow. he sounds yeah. like James Earl Jones, Thanks you know, the voice of Darth Vader. But like James Earl Jones is a very well-paid actor, so this was James Earl Scale who was able to work to scale, which is sort of like the the, the, oh. the nominal, like not you know the basic payment that actors get. So he was the one. Ah, okay. So he's if James Earl Jones who works for scale. Exactly. If you nice. needed James Earl Jones, but you couldn't afford him, you brought in this guy. Yeah. So but that's yeah. us. But that's who we brought in. But he's great though. He has a really good, like deep. Fantastic voice. Yeah, like yeah. storytelling voice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I really enjoyed the um, working with him and like he managed to bring so much gravitas to this role. Um, Whenever and like again, we were so lucky with a lot of the actors in this game. Um, we were able to bring so much character to it, and I think that's that's why people remember the game too. I think that's all the great, all the great acting. Yeah, absolutely. And I noticed that when you um, when you were uh, doing Reaper chapters, I think it was in chapter three when you reintroduced Crow. Like people went crazy because you got the original actor. Yeah, to come back and do the voice again. And that was that. I, I, I see there are some questions about casting process, and I'd love to talk about that actually. This is the yeah, kind of stuff I enjoy. But ahead. like, but, but but like the crow actor. Yeah, I. When we're gonna bring him back? Because he came back for Dreamfall, and then we wanted him back for for Dreamfall chapters because he's one of the sort of the really key actors in the game. Yeah, he's like a linchpin. Of the yeah, but I, but I, we couldn't find him. Like he didn't seem to. He seemed to have dropped off off the map completely. So, a friend of ours, uh, Jory Prum, who um, unfortunately passed away uh, last year, uh, really really great guy, and he had a lot of connections in the in the voiceover industry in the U.S. He went and found uh, Roger Reigns for us. Wow. Yeah, so he was like, I got him, I got his home f uh, phone number, I'm gonna call him, I'm gonna like set it up. And you know, that was, it was so great. And we actually managed to reconnect with Roger, bring him back for Dreamfall Chapters. Working with him again was like pure joy and like hearing his voice like unchanged after like almost 20 years. Like, oh, fanboy. Then afterwards I found like that he had 
Roger had a Twitter account and like I you could have just you could have just found <laughs> I did Twitter. Also did a really bad <laughs> job, but 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 Jory <laughs> saved the day on that one, and we also brought back like other actors. So the actor who plays the uh, Brian okay? Westhouse. Yeah. Uh, he I He also do. played uh, Rob Brocklax, one of the key characters in Dreamful Chapters and The Longest Journey. So we were able to to bring back uh, some of the actors, and that's uh, that was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Don't yeah. Yeah. But the casting process, yeah, I I, I think not. that's interesting. We I mean this was back in the days of. You know, back in the analog days, so we received um, uh, tapes of like the actors. So we basically worked with a with um, a casting agency uh, in New York. We sent the character descriptions off, uh, and we got back uh, tapes. Not like you know the types of you know things you can use in a Walkman, but this sort of like professional audio tape things. Yeah, the, the magnetic. Uh, yeah, like, like 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 really like uh, that kind of stuff that we then had to digitize in house, and then we listened to the samples, and then we faxed back the the actress we wanted. This was it was a long time ago, oh, kids. Yeah, this size. I'm I'm in my late seventies, Martin. But I'm holding up. I'm holding up. Um, but yeah, and then the same thing went for when we recorded it. Yeah, like we recorded on like 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 tapes, and th- those had to be like FedExed to us in Oslo. Wow. <laughs> I was always like so terrified of one of those going missing. Yeah. Um, but it, but it worked out. But but it was um, cool. so basically we it's had a whole bunch of alternatives for for each role, and it was just basically a question of finding who is the one that um, you know represents the character the best. So you got this down. You're you. Oh yeah. I mean, this well. isn't the this isn't a very difficult puzzle though. It's, it's just grab puzzle. grab thing, grab thing, combine and then yeah. and then do other thing and then but and then things light up. This is beautiful. Yeah. This like, I mean, it's it's nineties video games, video game graphics and. But it it's still pretty good. Like the team that I mean, the yeah. the art director on Longest Journey, Didrik uh, Tollefsen. Uh, mm-hmm. I haven't talked to him for a number of years. It's, uh He's not in the video game industry anymore. He's, I think, he's a fine artist now, right? Uh, and a farmer. Last thing I read. <laughs> yeah. um, but he, he's the one who basically put together. He had a team, of course, put together all these um, full motion videos, the cinematics in the game, right, and yeah, that was yeah. they worked their asses off. I mean, they, they worked twenty hour days um, from time to time to get all this stuff rendered. And you know, at this time, it like it took ages to render these uh, these full motion video sequences as well. It took like days to get them rendered. Hmm. Super, super slow. Like stuff like this is just really, it's really beautiful. beautiful. It's it's what the what the genre really did best. I feel the backgrounds here look amazing. Yeah. Like I, I, the 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 really sad thing is that um, the process here Hello. is that we did the the stuff in like we built the scenes in three D mm-hmm. and the characters are are three D characters. But then okay. everything was. Painted over like like we a matte painting, like a, like a, like a, and so we yeah like a piece of art. So we, so basically when we did that, I think we worked in higher resolution than what Aren't we have in we the final game. But none of that exists anymore. Like the the work in progress or the uh, yeah. I mean, but that happens with a lot of games. You know, you never think you're gonna really need it, but that would be great for an yeah. HD remaster. The baby's you know, probably to be able ready to boogie down as well. Paintings and, uh, and uh, because replacing the three D characters would have been a relatively simple job. Hmm. It'd be a cool thing to just hang on the wall as well. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, the the process I bet a lot was of that people have. Yeah, I I think so. But uh, the process was that we made the scenes in three D, which made a like a like a three D scene to be able to walk around it, and then sort of the, the everything was painted on top of afterwards. So it was quite complicated to to get this to look this way. Hmm. But it looks um, still looks nice on the right screen. Yeah, it does. I'm not sure if this is the right what? screen considering how big it is. Uh, but uh, it, uh, yeah, it probably it looks, it looks small, quite well. smaller the screen the better. It looks I mean, there quite is well a, on the stream itself. There is a, an iPad uh, version of the game, I guess, uh, and iPhone as well. Uh, yes. and it works really well on mm. on, on that side screen. Yeah. You have Especially come. with the vibrant colors and everything. You know me? Uh, someone's asking, uh, what is your creative process when coming up with a story, characters, or script? Waiting. Not just for Longest Journey, but in general. Is waiting. it something you kind of bunker Why? down yourself? Or is it a collaborative it experience? That's really interesting, because we, I mean, we're working on, on, on several new games now, and just yesterday what we had a story mean? meeting. So, I mean, from your perspective, I mean, because you're... You don't do a lot of the writing, but what's and your... You're like the game system guy. Yeah. 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 Do you partake in the, the story... Um, in the, in the story writing as yes. well, not writing the you, text, but, but what the story is. I mean, we, you know, and I usually comes up with 
the how will I know? The, 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 how will I know what talk to about do? Dreamfall and the, the overarching stories. Uh, this is where we need to go in a way. Yeah, yeah. this is the arc. Right, start yeah. here, the end here, end. and you are on your this, own. this certain things need to happen in between. Um, and he usually asks me and uh, another guy to come up with, the, with ideas. And then we come up with some uh, ideas and we have a meeting and we talk about uh, different approaches this and different ideas of uh, what can happen between these points. And mm. we uh, usually come to an agreement on what direction to, uh, to go. Mm -hmm. And then um, we usually try to prototype something fairly quickly, like within a week kind of thing. Uh, sure. Um, just gray box stuff, super simple uh, logic and super simple scripts to just sort of see if the, the pacing feels right. And uh, we play it, and we're happy with it. We test it on the team, and if the team is happy with it, we move forward with it. Mm. Uh, but usually, it takes a couple of iterations until we feel like we we have it right. Um, I mean, we work on some other games as well, and uh, we we uh, a process that I really like that we do, we often do is we talk what about like what what is the story in this in this I'm universe? Mm -hmm. and, uh, what is the backdrop? Mm. I must have been tossing and turning. And I really like that tonight. that process so to get everybody sort of on the no on the same page on what is the canvas we're we're dealing with. I guess the themes and the history of the world yeah, and and speed. what we are trying to not Doesn't just like, like in terms of the plot, but what are we either. trying to say with this game? Newport. Like uh, you know, are, are we trying to address some issues? Are we trying to make people feel a certain way? Yeah. And a lot of that is brainstorming, yeah. It is, and uh, I well, think as long as good thing the studio's got proper you as the, the creative director and then the designers and the people making art are on the like same page when it comes to that. It makes it so much easier to make a game together if we sort of all know the universe we're, we're dealing with mm. and what, we, what, what that is, mm. and uh, that becomes much easier. Mm -hmm. So I think like a lot of people probably assume that everything is worked out and there's a big script nice beforehand view. and that's never if the case. The uh, what we do know, let's take Dreamfall chapters, right. what we do know is that we had to provide, present a conclusion to Dreamfall Saga, which began with you know Dreamfall Longest Journey in 2006 and also to address points from Longest Journey. So we had like this massive amount of plot points and, and so what we did have was basically a framework. We knew the ending, we knew exactly where all the characters were going to end up, and we knew certain beats we were going to hit along I'm the way. Good at taking care of living but things. the moment-to-moment moment plot, the moment-to-moment moment narrative, that was worked out on an ongoing basis. So actually, like, let's take the final episode, you know, book five of Dreamful Chapters. We sat down in, you know, after we shipped book four to say, okay, we need to get here. Um, here are all the, you know, the, the, the threads that we have currently running. How are we going to you know, wrap all this, tie this off you know, and, and in a nice bow at the end? And mm. How are we going to end this? And then we sat and just hashed that out. Like, and, and, and that's always several people. That's never, that's never just sort of dialogue writing. It's, it's puzzles. It's, you know, it's, it's music and sound. Or how all these things tie together. And it's such a collaborative effort that mm -hmm. nobody ever sits down and writes a story for a game. Yeah. Uh, it, it's always in flux. With The Longest Journey, we didn't know what the ending was going to be until about three months before the game was supposed to be, uh, be out. Right. And, but at that point, then it sort of made sense. It was like, of course it has to go here. But we didn't know from the beginning. We just knew that, you know, it's a story about this girl and, and, and her role in this universe. And then by the time... We got there and we had only a few months left it suddenly of course it has to end this way it right. has to end with her saving the world sort of but not being the savior and sort of walking off into an unknown future that sort of it's an ending that a lot of people really appreciate but it's an ending that didn't exist until very very close to the end which is the thing i think is common in a lot of video games in general like you you start off somewhere and then you only realize what it is until you have maybe like a month until release. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's a common with TV shows too. People talk about having sort of a plotted out TV show years in advance. But I kind of like it when people are honest and say, no, we don't know exactly where this is going. We're gonna, we're gonna sort of adjust along the way because I think that's much more realistic. And I think it's much more interesting because you, you learn from feedback, you hey, learn from seeing your characters do certain things, you babe, learn from how the actors portray the roles, you learn Zach, from listen, how you build I the world, and, and that's an and interesting way to make on, a game. You, you can sort of compare making a video game to, to having like 50 people 
painting a picture at the same time. Everybody holds mm. a brush, yes, you know? exactly. And, and yeah. you might have an idea that yeah, we're we're painting a picture of a of a car uh, with mountains doing in the just background. Fine and you start painting, and you, I mean, you see sort of. Well, What's that? now we need to use uh, these hey, colors, and uh, now we need to take it this direction. You, know, you, you, you don't up know the end result, mm. because yeah. it, it's so many people with their own artistic dancing. ideas, and How I mean, it? It, it becomes something greater. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it is a lot of fun. Yeah, I have actually a hard time. I, you know, I try to write um, stuff you got in my spare me, time. You know, work on as all writers do, work on multiple novels and short stories, and I find it so much harder now than I did. <laughs> 20 years ago because I'm so used to the collaboration and I really enjoy that and I'm usually like if I throw out an idea that's gonna come back to me 10 times better through like the collaborative process mm. but back to the game I saw somebody talking about because I was gonna talk about like April's life in her room and somebody talked like they felt almost like a voyeur like looking into like a girl's private you know uh, her diary and her room and everything and that's Hello. such an important thing this is what I really enjoy both working on this game and with games that do this, the mun the mundane, the yeah, sort of the exactly. normal life, and I really appreciate like, games th that do this, that. This is a very typical like shitty student bedroom. Yes, and like, this came. Out this could have been my bedroom <laughs> when I was yeah, living as a student. Absolutely, and and a, and you know there are a lot of sources of inspiration for this game. But I lived in in the, I went to university in New York and I lived in New York and Newport is based on a part of New York that I lived in, uh, the East Village, so um, and April's room is based a lot on like places I lived when I went to school and I was just sort of that experience of being in a huge city and coming from the countryside you know I'm, I, I was born and raised in the countryside so to me it's sort of coming to New York was like this revelation right yeah um, and that's sort of that's part of April is it's, it's, it's sort of that part of me that I came into this environment and to have and to really sort of tell a story about a place and a life that isn't necessarily very glamorous and, and that isn't necessarily super exciting, that to me is exciting. And I love games that start out with that. Like, mm. it's just normal life. Like you, not, you, not, not like an obvious uh, no. hero. Yeah. Not being dropped into war with a gun or like being told you the chosen one or anything. Just like, just like this, like seeing a, a bulletin board. Again, like drawn from my experiences of living in an analog, you know, World in the in the what, in the nineties. What is the S in BYOS? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> is it so? Bring your own shit. Bring your own spirits. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, a lot of people in chat are asking about what? the longest journey home, which is. Uh, Let, let's 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 wait with that until. Okay, the end. let's wait with that. But and this this message board, I think, is like this is like this is environmental storytelling, like uh, like what I really enjoy. It's sort of uh, hiding little sort of story bits in the world and it's uh, really cool to see this i totally forgotten about some of this stuff but like then there's there's tons of story in this yeah and it's a story not just about yeah. like take this note for example exactly so it's not yeah and that of course relates to a puzzle yes. uh, that pops up but it tells a story not just of the uh, of the people in the building it tells a story of of of, of april as well and and her life here uh her reaction to what she's seeing here and this is where the actress uh, Sarah Hamilton uh, did a fantastic job to make this character come across. But it's sort of again the sort of the the normalcy of it, the mun mundanity of it. Yeah, I think it's super appealing to me, uh, and I and I love this in games. And some people find that uninteresting, but to me, it's sort of good stories start off with sort of this mundane aspect, and yeah. then it sort of spirals away from that as and, the story goes on. And it's interesting because we've sort of like some games now also go back to that stuff with games like Gone Home for example yeah, yeah. which is all about going home. mundanity and <laughs> exactly. all about like looking through drawers and finding stuff that a family has left behind to like, yeah. piece together things Nightmares. things for yourself basically. yeah and, it's and that sort of that environmental, environmental stuff, so. storytelling to to which is which games do really well uh, of being sort of able to that pace yourself and walk through a through the world someone says flat screen tv ragnar is a prophet confirmed <laughs> <laughs> yeah that tv pretty much looks like a tv nowadays so i probably didn't have to be much of a prophet to figure that tvs were gonna get there <laughs> yeah but that's how all this game was that was like whoa are you crazy man a flat tv that size never gonna happen <laughs> and it even has it even has a stand that doesn't really 
I mean, it looks like it's it's standing on something that just like it's like a pole. It looks like it's standing on an exercise machine yeah, or something. Yeah, say. or some kind of like really <laughs> I weird think that's artwork it. I, or something. Yeah, I think it's it's a more artsy um, TV stand. <laughs> but it's it's funny how things come around. Like this doesn't look that outdated now. Like everything here sort yep. of looks like yeah. it's yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> it came exposed back. brick and like rusty yeah, stuff yeah. all even, around. Even the clothes. And are... this is this is basically the slideshow you get on your Chromecast. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much, or any sort of modern TV built in, uh, built in, uh, yeah. And uh, the character you're talking to now, she was like a big deal back when this game came, came out, because she's one of the few she's gay, gay yeah, characters exactly. in games. But you know what, people ask us like, oh, you made such a statement and everything, but that was never, like, we was just like, oh, we need a character, oh, she should be, she should be gay because people are gay. So we just made her gay. It was never meant to be a... Uh, enormous statement Sorry. but it it's became that for a lot of people i think and i and anyway, they really appreciate that but it was but it was never sort of like no intentionally so uh, identity Can politics or anything you like you that i mean it was just sort of like yeah that, there are gay people yeah. in the world so we should have some in our game and uh, i think again it comes from you know, a lot of experience me going to university in, in, uh, in New York and like just these are people I knew, you know, like this is just normal life for me. Um, yeah, exactly. But I really and representation like matters and just like presenting presenting them as just normal. Diversity people. was normal. Like there, there was never yeah. a big deal. And, and I think it's almost become a bigger deal in retrospect for us. And we really work to have diversity in our games. And we sort of get both praised and yelled at for doing that because we sort of... Some people say we're forcing it on them, but it feels so natural to us. Yeah. And that's always been what we've done. But it almost feels like now we're thinking more about it than we did back then. Yeah. And that's really weird because back then it was unusual. And today it's not unusual. So it's kind of a weird process that's yeah. happened. Because for I remember for, for chapters, uh, you did change. Well, some people f felt that you did change someone's sexuality at some point. Yeah, um, like you, you hinted at the the fact that this person, this character. I'm trying not to spoil it, which is why I'm <laughs> saying it so vaguely. Yeah, uh, I'm you, not you, sure hinted at, huge you hinted spoiler, at you hinted at you hinted at that a certain character was interested, was more interested in someone well, than people the, of the same sex. Yeah, than, this character was never really developed for the original Dreamfall, and and when we had a chance to develop the character, he sort of became who he was always meant to be. But I think people, feel, some some people feel like, oh, you're trying to make a statement. But we're really not. We're just trying to include interesting people with interesting backgrounds that reflects the real world. And that was always the case with the longest journey. Yeah. But I really appreciate the fact that a lot of um, uh, a lot of people who grew up with this game, uh, 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 women um, uh, and uh, gay people who grew up and said, you know what, I really appreciated this game because it it gave me characters that I could identify with and I was like that means a lot to me it was um, that's that, well, that's one of the most meaningful things and to still have people say that after 20 years is it's a huge impact and I hope the same goes for Dreamfall chapters too that people who play that can feel like you know what this character stuck with me I played this game when I was, was young or in a difficult situation I can really identify with it right that's the most important thing it, that nothing beats that I think she'll be a successful awesome. Artist. Uh, I'm gonna skip through some of this dialogue and then we can. Uh, There's a lot of dialogue. There is a game. lot of dialogue. It is a wordy oh, game. I was wondering when I was looking at it, I <coughs> thought about this before, but in, in chapters we use a lot of moving I'm cameras, like going. cameras that mm. zoom in like slowly or uh, backwards. Yeah. Yeah, there are no more classes. Is that a semester, thing back then? No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it was a thing, but it was not the thing that we did. Like this game has dialogue sequences that are longer than the ones in Dreamfall chapters, and all you're doing is watching two characters who barely move. Oh. Yeah. And and it's and the fact that it works means that the actors did a fantastic job. Yeah. But it is obviously hard. It is much harder to sit through today, and I think the game is harder to play today than it was back in 1999, 2000. I think patience for this kind of stuff is probably less. Yeah. Oh. Uh, because you're used to so much, so, so much better interaction. Yeah, I mean, it's like people's tastes and and, and uh, I guess their 
attitude to like pacing and it, it changes all the time mm -hmm. it changes all the time and um and and i and i've heard that from people who try to replay and go like oh this was a lot harder to sit through than i remember and that's just because it's technology has moved on but one cool thing about the dialogues in this game that no games have this time did is that characters actually talk on top of each other they overlap each other like in like in real conversations yes. and games are usually like i say one thing to you and then you wait half a second and then you yeah. have to have mm. a response instead of being like an immediate back and forth yeah. and we did that with dreamful chapters too we actually had to sort of make technology mm. that yeah. could support that. it because yes. it, it sounds like an easy thing to do it never is because you stream all the the voice, the, uh, yeah. the voiceover, so you have to sort of pre-stream it in order to be able to play it before the other piece of dialogue is, yeah, is ready. It sounds very robotic. It sounds super robotic, but a lot of games still do that where, you know, everybody's waiting for everybody else to finish. And even movies and TV shows, you can, you can tell sometimes where people cut themselves off and then the next person sort of says the line that's supposed to cut yeah. them off. Yeah. Yeah. It feels very artificial. How would you describe your perfect day? Uh, I had... I had forgotten that you meet Cortez this early in the game. That he's just like sitting there. And then he's a great character. He's been he he was um, he was played by an actor who went on to become like uh, like uh, one of those TV anchors in Miami. I think huh. I, I think in Miami. So yeah, we couldn't use him for the follow up for Dreamfall because he was basically you know he was he was a news anchor. Like he just didn't do voiceovers anymore. But he had a really wonderful uh, voice. That is really cool. Huh. I had no I idea. Is he trivia? This is like this is why yeah, we have lots of trivia. This is why we have people over. Uh, yeah. This is why we have people over. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I seem to remember that at least the, the the actor who plays April. I think she also went on to do a lot of like animated shows. She did. Yeah, and uh, she's a, she's a she's a great person. We we kept in touch. Uh, she also struggled with some. Um, she was very sick for a time. And she, uh, thank God she she got through it, and she actually was able to um, to get support from the uh, from the longest journey fan community to, to to pay her medical. Yeah, for, oh, wow. was it Patreon? Yeah, I think it was. Been able to so. no, it wasn't Patreon. It was one of those other uh, GoFundMe. Go yeah, like yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, where the yeah. the the yeah. longest journey and Dreamfall community really stepped up and helped her with her medical bills, and that was great. Mm. Yeah. she was really grateful for that, and I'm glad that she was able to sort of get something back for 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 creating such an iconic role. This Newport. is really nice. Like this, mm. that, that's great, great design. This sort of reminds me of. Uh, Final Fantasy VII, which had a similar yeah, yeah, yeah. similar setup with like static backgrounds, and then you moved your character around. Yeah, and this, that's one of my favorite shots. So when you see the city, and there's so many layers there, and so many sort of different styles. Thick smoke. That thick smoke. Yeah, I like, like thick smoke. Big. We recreated this scene for for Dreamful. Yes, and we made it sort of like very dingy and dark, and um, yeah, we we made everything uh, gritty with Dream with Dreamfall. Mm. Not everything, but uh, did Punkers used to skip in the nineties? <laughs> yeah, that is this guy, that is a great animation too. The, this guy is just fantastic. I mean, his jacket is what I would consider <laughs> modern style, like for now. And uh, yeah, okay, I'm just gonna run to the cafe and. But it looks beautiful, and the 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 designer, the art directioner, is all from from Didrik Tolfsen, who was uh, was fantastic at doing this kind of stuff. Very art deco inspired, but with this sort of this sort of I don't know what you call it, this sort of um, steampunky layer on top of it. So art deco yeah. meets steampunk mm -hmm. before was that was a thing. I might actually care. So I think like. Uh, Dedrick was really ahead of his time, and he, I, I know he didn't really want to do games anymore, but he could have really done some, some great stuff for games. Yeah. Um, for Dreamful Chapters, uh, the art director is uh, Christopher Grav, and he's done some... I know he was a fan of... Uh, he's been a fan of, of Dedrick's work on Longest Journey, because I know he played Longest Journey. Uh, I'm not sure he played it when he came out, but at least he had played it... Um, and was a fan of the art direction. So I think what Christopher brought to Dreamfall Chapters was something really fresh and exciting too. Sure. Um, that that sort of was inspired by by the original games, but that really sort of found its own style. Mm -hmm. And with, with Dreamfall Chapters, we created this brand new city called Europolis. That's hit, that's actually mentioned in, not sure it's mentioned in The Longest Journey, but it's mentioned in Dreamfall, and we got to create that, and that was, uh, that looks really, really good, I think. Yeah. 
This park also is... It's great, and the oh. train moving there is mm -hmm. like... There's so many nice little things uh, that I've totally forgotten about that I think... I think it just makes this game feel she like a real world. The skies out here all day long, all year. And uh, the he guy painting who's obviously using, reusing ever. the Cortez model with some uh, <laughs> minor changes. <laughs> yeah, just make his shirt white, it's fine. Just, the, the 3D models have aged a lot worse than the, uh, <laughs> than, the, than the backgrounds. But 3D models have a tendency to do that. I mean, if you they go back that. and look at, for example, like Look at Nintendo 64 games, which to oh, us God, looked yeah. incredible when yeah. they came out. It's hard. Look at Super Mario 64 now. It looks like it looks like butt. I'm sorry. It, it I love like, that game, but it looks like butt. It, it it yeah, and it's even like hard to play because the frame rate is not what you remember. It's like it yep. wasn't the frame rate a lot better back then? No, mm -hmm. it wasn't. But it just felt a uh, lot better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Look at this too, like the environmental environmental animations. That's just a lot of attention to the detail. I mean, the artist and I had this wasn't me at all. Like the artist on this game just did an amazing job. And they worked super hard. We actually had one of the artists, uh, even Jarnska, who... Um, he, he still joined. works here. He works here at Funcom now. So he, he left Funcom to join us and he worked on Dreamful Chapters. And then he, uh, when that was done, he went back to Funcom. Huh. And we also had another... Uh, he was like, fuck this, I'm going back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, joking. Like, I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> no, I think he really wanted to. He's like, no, Funcom is... Uh, that's the place to be. Yeah, okay. So we also had one of the other ones, Kjetil Lielnes, who has also worked on um, The Longest Journey. He mm -hmm. worked on, um, um, on Dreamful Chapters for a long time. So we're lucky to get like uh, a lot of the core no, team back in order to do no, I've got too much sort to of do the, right uh, I guess the getting the band back together. Mm. <laughs> yes. And that, that was great to be able to do that. Unfortunately, a lot of the other guys aren't, you know, weren't really working in games anymore or spread to the winds. Yeah. That has a tendency to happen in, uh, oh, and here's the, here's the dragon that we saw earlier. Yeah. That tends to happen in Norway, unfortunately. Like people work on a game or two and then they realize that uh, maybe I should go do something else, and then they end up in the IT sector for yeah. for 15 years. Ruined. Yes. I think it's hard to stick around in games sometimes. I mean, it's uh, it's it's uh, it's backbreaking work. Um, but if you if you love it like we do, it's worth it. Yes, absolutely. You here? I'm uh, trying to restart my laptop because uh, there was some. Uh, Issues with uh, getting, but that's actually Twitch. not. You said that's the dragon is over for. It's not actually. It kind of looks like it. But yeah, but it's, yeah. Okay. This is um. There's a there's a people. There's a like a strange uh, a magical race called the Myrum in in Arcadia, the magical world, and this is a representation of them. Um, and I, you know, I it's uh, April's friend is the one who made that statue. And I can't remember exactly why, maybe somebody in the chat can remind me exactly the, the, the reason why they were able to sort of create this, uh, this sort of a 3D model of it. This is another this really nice uh, video sequence mm -hmm. to actually see what April uh, looks like. I'm not sure about that shirt, if that shirt hold, uh, holds up, <laughs> but it gave her a very distinct look. Uh, I'm going to quickly tab out of the game. I'm going to see if I can find the uh, Twitch chat on this browser because it doesn't work on my laptop suddenly. Uh, there we are. And there we are back in the game. And it uh, glitches out for a little bit and it should hopefully. <laughs> it recovers. Yeah, if you're uh, if you have difficulties with like seizures, you might want to look away. It for doesn't a bit. flicker there, does it? Uh, it doesn't oh, flicker there. there yeah. yeah. So uh, I'm there? just gonna skip past the dialogue. Really, people, cannon stroking. <laughs> that's where you go. Yeah. What's the deal with the cannon stroking? <laughs> that's all him. That's all this guy. Well, it's not really. It's your fault. <laughs> it is not my. You <laughs> only stroked that damn cannon. That just felt right. You're the one who made the thing. Uh, this sounds extremely <laughs> dirty to people who don't know what we're talking about. It is not. It is not my cannon. I it is, like it is an actual real cannon. Yeah, well, I guess right. it was when we were uh, taping uh, taping some uh, videos for the Kickstarter. Taping? When were you born? We didn't use a tape. We uh, This was on physical uh, and digital media. We were digi to digitizing digital. some video. <laughs> uh, and uh, I just, it was at a cannon. And I was stroking You were stroking it. it. So that's just Basically. felt right. It was oh, there they are. It was good. And there it went away. Uh, someone says that the GOG version of the game fixed the alt-tab uh, flicker. Hmm. So, uh... Maybe you can save and, uh, Return to it or something. That will help. Oh, oh there we go. Open that up the options. Easy. 
Yeah. That is very easy. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I finished my painting, and I've forgotten what I'm supposed to do. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna look at the sculpture now. Uh, I don't think it's ever explained how Emma could create that art representation. Yeah, I, I remember now actually why, why, what the intent was there. Magic was leaking through. So, okay, this is complicated. But the, the, the sort of the, the uh, divide between worlds was getting thinner, it's getting worn out in this game. Yeah. Uh, because the guardian be between the two worlds of magic and, and, uh, and science was sort of you know, his time was coming to an end. So things were starting to leak through. And the whole intent was that people in Stark, in our world, were starting to sort of see magic, see elements of Arcadia. And this statue was supposed to be, you know, a, a hint at that. So after the end of the longest journey, and it's this is hinted at in, in Dreamfall, something called the collapse happened. And that's when the world sort of briefly touched where the divide was completely erased. It happened almost simultaneously, I think, with the end of The Longest Journey. And that was sort of a cataclysm where magic bled into our world and science bled into to Arcadia. Yeah. Um, and that affected a lot of technology, which is why, how we explain Dreamfall being sort of less technolo technologically advanced than The Longest Journey in some ways, because it ruined technology. It was like a glitch in the world and it killed a lot of people and affected a lot of people and that event is also uh, hinted at or um, described in Dreamfall chapters. There's even a memorial in in, um, in Europolis. That's right. The people who, I remember um, that. Yeah. Who died in the in, in, in the collapse. So that's actually that's the long story. I remember it now. <laughs> like that's that's why she was able to create this digital statue. She saw through into sort of the, the world of magic. Hmm. That is uh, that is now canon. In lore explanation. It says everyone at Red Thread Games is watching the stream and Ragnar said they shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Jerks. See, that's the thing. You should never tell people not to watch, not to do something. Because I guess we then should they will do it. Tell so stories about the team uh, now then, like, oh, yeah, yeah. just to punish them. So uh, Talk about the yeah. Quinton's Asian glow. <laughs> Yeah, Quinton is the uh, lead designer on uh, on uh, on Dreamfall chapters. We debated bringing him along, but uh, Martin uh, ended up coming along to talk about cannon stroking. <laughs> <laughs> I have very little uh, to offer on uh, longest journey trivia. But it's uh, I think it's good to have people who who uh, work in games and can like explain explain the process behind things. And he said I thought the collapse was because the worlds collided back together. Yeah, but that's wasn't that what I said? I probably explained it in a really bad way. But yeah, the worlds were briefly sort of reunited, collided. Yeah, the full reunification didn't happen. But uh, the longest cannon stroking really <laughs> did. <laughs> but that's why the collapse happened. So in the sort of the, the lore of the universe, eventually the worlds are supposed to reunite. And that's sort of hinted at towards the end of the Dreamful chapters to how that happens. Um, can you talk about the soundtrack you hear in Fringe Cafe? Uh, no. Because I you can't why. remember I can't what it, it sounds I can't like. Hear it. But I think that was probably our composer, <laughs> Bjorn Arve Lagim, who was fantastic. Um, who, I think this was his music. It's hmm. a great soundtrack. Yeah. Uh, something about faith. Uh, uh, there's something about had to do with faith. Uh, no, faith. Yeah, the faith storyline from Dreamfall didn't really have anything to do with the collapse of the worlds uh, reuniting. That was the end of the longest journey that, that sort of affected that. Hmm. And. Uh, Please don't spoil anything, Ragnar. I'm not sure what I'm supposed we're to be spoiling. <laughs> we're trying not to spoil. If I'm things, spoiling the longest journey and you have an issue with that, you really shouldn't be watching <laughs> the stream. It's been it's been 18 years. Like you should have been able to get through the game by now. I kind I, of I kind of think the statute of limitations on yes, spoilers has out. sort of like run out like eight years. Uh, ago. On longest journey and Dreamfall, I think so. Dreamfall chapters. No, we're not gonna we're not spoiling anything. Uh, but we're just uh, mentioning like that. It's things are hinted at in that game. Uh, but uh, we're gonna try to keep uh, keep some spoilers uh, to the minimum. Someone asked Charlie was a mummy all the time. I don't He's see through here. I think that's like kind of like a, probably like a driver bug or something. He yeah, was not be. he was not see through when we made him. Yes. But it's uh, been a long time. He's worn thin. Yeah. The uh, the roommate's legs earlier were also kind of see through from like her knees down. I think there was something up with her. Uh, Here's Ragnar is so possibly. tight with spoilers. I've heard there's things he won't even tell the rest of the team when it comes to his stories. Is that true? 
Uh, I wouldn't know, would I? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Supposed to be secret, so thanks. <laughs> Um, but it's I, I I don't I think the team I think pe there are people on the team who know everything, uh, but probably not the whole team. Right. But they haven't asked. Ooh. Do 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 do. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna try to set it up so we could maybe do a uh, raffle of some sort to maybe give Ooh, away raffle. some. Uh, we can give it some some keys. We have some uh, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One uh, keys to do yeah. whole chapters. Yeah. And uh, these are going to be uh, How are European gonna... keys, then. Oh, maybe? No, wait. They are. Are they uh, region free? No, that's a good question. I don't know. We'll figure that out. We can figure that out, but uh, we should know this. We can probably <laughs> make it for the region that the person who is being wins the raffle is in. We'll 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 sort that out. You will 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 get you the key. But how are you planning to do this raffle? I'm planning do to do this raffle uh, thanks to. Are you gonna do some something questions? called? Uh, are you just gonna do? We're raffle? just gonna do a uh, raffle, and we're I gonna just, do raffle. Just people. raffle it. So uh, as you do. If you're in chat, uh, just type in uh, exclamation point raffle R A F F L E. Uh, someone says I volunteer to test the keys. Uh, <laughs> forgettable username. Uh, we're just gonna forget that you said that. Uh, I'm trying to also look in the chat if there are any questions. I, it's not that we don't want to answer questions. It's that we're so busy talking that <laughs> we miss out on stuff. Oh, there's a lot of raffle now. Is, now yeah. there's just a lot of raffle now stuff. there's a lot of raffle it's just stuff. all raffle stuff because everyone. You're all raffling. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what you could do to, to support retro games? Just just buy the game. <laughs> just, just buy it. You We're do know they're not all going to win a copy. <laughs> you Every do know that, Oh, right? I thought everybody who just wrote Raffle <laughs> automatically got a key. I was like, holy shit. No. Yeah. Um, God spoke Limerick. Someone asked for a Limerick. Do you have a Limerick on hand? <laughs> right on hand. I know who that you're is. The, you're the... Really, you do? <laughs> Ghostmark sounds. Oh, of course it is. Of course it is. Uh, someone's asking how you how did you come up with the name Funcom? But Funcom was already a thing when yeah, you uh, when you made this us. game. Yeah, don't ask that's us. That's not on you. Uh, we're gonna have to like call some people and get them to, to come back. Like there uh, are people I actually passed by on my way into this because we no longer work at Funcom. For those of you who don't know that, me and Martin are with Red Thread Games. Mm -hmm. so we're visiting Funcom for the first time in a very long time. Yeah. But I saw a face that I recognized that was here. Who, who's at Funcom when I started at Funcom? Uh, Lars Petter and I started yes. at Funcom in 1994. He started in 1993. So if yep. you're gonna ask somebody about how the name Funcom came about, like he didn't. Maybe he would know. Maybe he would know. <laughs> he 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 was there before me. Yeah. So like, what's it like coming back here and, and like seeing? Well, you seeing some old people. That's re that's a really good question. Because a lot we of the... talked about it in the in the taxi on the way over. Like, is this gonna be weird? Like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because but it's 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 nice though. I mean, a lot of the same people are. My God, there's yeah. so many of the uh, same people. Feels, yeah. Right, yeah, feels like uh, coming, coming home. home at some, yeah. Yeah. In some sense. And the moment you walked in, like tons of people are just like, "Hey, how are you guys doing?" And like it, it felt really good. Just like it almost felt like, yeah, why not? We'll just stay here, go back to work. <laughs> But I always said it like if if Funcom ever makes Anarchy Online two, then we're here. Yeah. We'll do it. Yep. We're 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 yeah. So <laughs> now you've you heard it here. To, <laughs> you just have to yell at Funcom to make it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they already do. They yell at us uh, quite a lot. <laughs> okay, we've uh, we've closed. Can Martin answer something from this? Something for you, Martin? Yeah. Curious uh, as to what it was like transitioning from a fan player of AO to actually working with the people who created it. Because uh, someone mentioned in chat that the, like their their dream scenario was to basically have your experience to start out as a fan and then yeah. like slowly transition into working for for the company you were a fan of. Yeah, I mean uh, it was great, but it was sort of a coincidence as well. I was a super fan of uh, Anarchy Online and played it a lot. It was my first MMO. Right. Uh, started playing six months after launch, so I didn't get any of the. The hiccups that that game had uh, during its launch, I had no bad experiences, loved mm -hmm. it, uh, right. played it to death, uh, and uh, then I started, um, I actually didn't want to, or I had no plans of going into games, I uh, actually wanted to become a doctor. Do a oh wow, uh, job good. Yeah, so I was, I was a medic in the armed forces and I was planning to, uh, yeah, to be a doctor and um, I had in, during the military service in Norway, you have one week where you can do different courses. Right, yeah, then, yeah. Uh, could, uh, yeah, learn different things. I did an HTML course. Uh, and I, I did it. a JavaScript course. Yeah. 
So didn't I, work out. Uh, then I decided, uh, okay, uh, computer, computer cities. <laughs> I love it. That's the future. That's the future. Uh, so I did that uh, while I was still playing Anarchy Online, and um, just it happens to be a design position open at uh, at Funcom when they were making uh, Adrian Cohn, and then I applied and in? got the job, and the it was right it was amazing. Phone. I thought it was great. Uh, I really loved working at Funcom. Do you have like any idea where kids coming home to, to uh, just um, lots of awesome people. Yeah. Always dreams. really uh, respect the Funcom yeah. for. Uh, daring to take uh, chances with their games, not know. always playing it oh, safe, yeah. but sure. yeah. we're trying to do something Thanks. different. Uh, so uh, Anytime, yeah, that was that was a dream scenario. I, I loved every closer? minute of it. And then you left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was never because any of us were like uh, didn't like working at Funcom. It was great. It was just the right time. So sort of after making two MMOs, yeah. uh, I'd worked at Funcom for uh, almost ten years and launched two titles. Uh, you sort of sure. Yeah. Uh, you get a bit tired. <laughs> uh, we've had one winner of the raffle, um, user Malukis. I've uh, already uh, sent him a uh, yes. direct message. Malukis. Congratulations. Congrats. Uh, so he can pick and choose which one he. Uh, and of course, we can give out PC keys as well. Like we. Uh, so if, you, if you're on PC and you didn't participate in a raffle, it doesn't have to be PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. It can also be PC and Mac. We can we can do another one. Just like just another yeah, quick one. Let's to, do uh, another one. Sure. Let's do another one. Okay, we're gonna reset and then uh, we're gonna open up another raffle. Just type exclamation mark raffle and then you'll be entered to win and then we can uh, uh, maybe do a uh, PC version. To the longest journey home. Really yeah, <laughs> is it time now, Ragnar? Now that we can wait for, the, how, uh, wait for the raffle to go. We'll do that at the end so that people stay, otherwise we're just gonna get people leaving. We've been going for an hour almost already. Yeah. So, uh, Time like flies when you're having fun. I think you can start doing it now that all the raffling and stuff is, uh, <laughs> is going. I, I was trying to get out of talking about <laughs> Luggage Journey Home now. <laughs> broke it. Well, we've, we've, we've said a couple of things. Like, we've, it's really important for us that people know that Dreamful Chapters is the end of, like, it's, it's, an, it's the end of a lot of stuff. Like, Dreamful Chapters ends Zoe's story. It ends... A lot of character stories, it, it ends that particular part of the saga. Uh, but we did say that we wanted to make Longest Journey Home. We even had it as, as a stretch goal on the Kickstarter. We didn't get to that stretch goal. Um, and we, we know what that game is about. And I, I, I can talk a little bit about what that game was supposed to be about because we've also said that for now we're, we're you know we we put that sort of game to rest aside we mm -hmm. we have all this stuff we're working on but the longest journey home is a game that is supposed to fill in the time between the end of the longest journey and the beginning of dreamfall it's meant to be a more traditional point and click adventure game it's meant to be sort of done in the style of the longest journey with uh, painted backgrounds and uh, and and you know <laughs> more high end, more modern 3D characters. Uh, it, it's a game that's supposed to be a sort of a lyrical um, journey through the ten years that that uh, that April and Crow spent together, wandering between worlds, and uh, supposed to sort of explain some of the mysteries that uh, we've left unanswered about. April's whereabouts after the end of the longest journey and, and why she changed a lot for Dreamful. She became embittered, she became an angry person and why that was. And Longest Journey Home is also supposed to then carry the story a bit beyond the end of Dreamful chapters and to, to, to sort of go forwards in time and uh, to really conclude the universe in a lot of ways. So I think like that game, if we, if it's ever made, will be the absolute final revisit of the Longest Journey yes. universe. Uh, it's a game that sort of will be like there's no way back after that game. There's not like, you know, you you could of course do stories in the past, or you could do sort of prequels and things like that. But that game is the one that sort of yeah, it it really finalizes a lot of things. So. Uh, I think after making Dreamful Chapters, we, we, we felt that it's it's time for us to at least take a break from, from this universe. Uh, and of course, the, you know, the Red Thread Games doesn't own 
uh, longest journey or dream for all the universes, that's Funcoms. Mm -hmm. But of course, you guys have, have not been uh, you know, blocking that in any way. If we wanted to make the longest journey home today, you guys would uh, be okay with that because you know that's that's always been we've had a great working relationship. So it's don't yell at Funcom for this. This is all Red Thread Games' decision, but it sort of wasn't. We needed to make something of our own, so we're working on a few games that are sort of our universes, new stories. But you know, once we're done that, and once we've managed to make, tell our own stories a little bit, and, and, and to, to uh, put Dreamfall and, and this universe in, in, in the rare mirror, and had a break, then, then maybe. And it really depends on... It depends on how well Dreamfall Chapters does on consoles, it actually does. It depends a lot on are people still, do people still want the game. Uh, and if that answer is yes, and it's a year from now, two years from now, five years from now, ten years from now, and we decide that, yeah, now is the right time to do it, then we might end up doing it. But I wouldn't sort of hold your breath right now. But it doesn't mean you can't ask, and that doesn't mean that we don't listen, and we, if enough people... You know, are still craving that story in in a few years, then then maybe we'll get back to it. I think it'll be uh, a fun game to make, and there are people who are dying to work on it. So, uh, so so even working with like other writers, other designers, to get this game done is is definitely uh, doable. I think it's like good for your mental health too to to like take some breaks and work on yeah. work on different things and not just like the same thing for, for X amount of years. We've been working like, I'm, I'm assuming that you've had some of this stuff in your head for for quite a while. Oh, yeah. At some point you'd super refreshing. I mean it, it is a passion project, but at yeah. some point also like you 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 might get tired of it. You might for think us just like, okay, put it aside and do something else. Yeah, exactly. For us at uh, Red Thread Games, we've been working on Dreamful Chapters for over four years. Mm -hmm. And for Don't me, I've been working with this universe since 1997, six, seven? So 20-odd years. Yeah, yeah, 20 years. So it's sort of like, oh, hey, right now I just want to think about something else. But it doesn't mean that it's gone. Or that, and, and that story is written down. So it's sort of... It's, you can, like well, we talked about it earlier, the, the the framework is written on what actually happens. Right, will still need to be worked out, but it's there, so we can. I've you know I'm not we're not sort of discounting the possibility, but we're also telling people that right now we're we're not working on that. We're working on all of that. Yep. All right, uh, the other winner, the winner of the other raffle, was uh, a user named Colgate Sandwich, which, which in my yes. opinion is a fantastic <laughs> username. That sounds both disgusting and amazing. I'm sure someone's made a Colgate sandwich I'm, at I'm some sure. point. Yeah. Just go to like the shitty food porn subreddits <laughs> and you'll find it. No, I don't want to go there. <laughs> it's a great subreddit. It's, it's fantastic. Uh, I think we've been we've been going for for about an hour. So uh, uh, unless there's uh, something you guys uh, wanna wanna share or wanna. Well, of course you wanna plug well, Dreamfall right chapters. I was uh, talking about Dreamfall Home. I I thought of a Longest limerick. Journey Home. Longest Journey Home. I thought of a limerick. Okay. But it's kind of shitty. <laughs> uh, but here goes. Hit us. There once was a stream at Funcom. <laughs> we don't know if it's good or a junk one. Uh, the topics were a mix, but we talked about dicks, and in three hours I'll be a drunk one. <laughs> because we're going to a launch party for this. Nice. <laughs> yeah. And on that bombshell, <laughs> <laughs> I think it is time to, uh, to, that was amazing. Uh, to say goodbye. Thank you. And uh, you're getting just a race. Tab out of this. <laughs> Finally, that's what it takes. Limericks is oh, uh, yeah. a limerick every day. I hope the team wasn't watching and now <laughs> are trying feverishly to write limericks of their own. But it can never beat this one. So, on that bombshell, we will uh, we will go back to uh, this shot of us. And uh, I had fun. I Three handsome had men. Fun. Three handsome men. Three Absolutely. handsome bearded men having fun for an hour. With various like we. have We've positioned ourselves in like order of beard growth, like amount yeah. of beard growth, because like mine is the longest, and then there's yours, and then there's yours. It's arranged by people who cares. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't care, which is why I have I, this. I can't. I can't make it as long as yours. Uh, I just don't have the. I don't have the testosterone to, to to get that far. Yeah, just just do what I do and just stop stop shaving. That's what I do. <laughs> uh, so. Um, on that note. On that note, <laughs> shall, we are going to uh, say goodbye. Uh, and uh, there will be a uh, Secret World Legends stream in about 45 minutes. Whoa. So uh, tune in for that. The guys over at the US office are going to show off some of those things, things that are uh, 
happening in Secret World Legends, and uh, I'm going to let you guys go and get to your uh, launch Top party. Us. We're going to um, go home to our tapas. Finally, yes. finally, I'm going to say uh, congratulations to uh, Rain Games in Bergen, who also launched a game yeah. today. Oh, yeah. Uh, World to the West. Yes. It looks uh, great. And which is a spiritual follow-up to Teslagrad, which was a great game. Same universe. So uh, shout out to our Norwegian, other Norwegian uh, uh, game developers. And, uh, and then we're going to leave.